Well, first of all, Steve, it's terrific to meet you in your amazing, is it an apartment that you're at or a house? Well, I'm in a house. I'm in a house. And uh, after many years of playing music, which first brought me out here to California, was music, not TV or film. Um, and I mean many years <laughs> of like playing music in basements and then into, and then into garages and so and so. I finally have music in my house. I can shut the door and I can play music, write music, record music um, in my own house. So that in itself, for someone that grew up playing music and wanted to drive across the country and all those things, forget everything else that I do, is kind of a success story for me. So did you, <laughs> you know, I remember we're, like you said, we talked before about the same right. age. Yeah. I remember t tons of people saying, I am getting out of mass, I'm driving to California when I'm out of school. That's literally what you did. It's literally what I did. I, I, I actually graduated high school in 1994, no, 1991. And uh, I spent in high school, I was in bands playing music like people did at that time. And I said, I'm going to get out of high school and I'm going to go to California because at the time that's where the bands were coming from. That was the big deal, right? I'm sure you remember all the bands oh, yeah. and so forth. And I was that guy. I spent about a year uh, at home, I was going to go to um, Berkeley School of Music, and actually then I was going to go to University of Lowell for music, and I, in both cases, I said, no, I'm going to play music, um, which maybe wasn't uh, the best decision at the time, I don't know, but it got to me, got me where I am now, and then after this happened, that happened, a few things happened, uh, you know, at home, we had a big fire in my house, so it delayed me a little bit, unfortunately, I got in a truck, um, that fire delayed a little bit. So after uh, about a year and a half, I got in a truck and with the singer from my band, I drove out here, a little baby blue S10 pickup truck. <laughs> and um, it was the first time uh, I really uh, got out of New England, minus a few trips with the family. And that first trip out here took two weeks, about almost three weeks, actually. We stopped and camped on the way, had my drums in the back of the truck. And we got out to California and uh, I spent, I mean, it sounds crazy, but it's like the story goes, I spent a few weeks living in a truck, living and sleeping in that car, trying to figure out what I'm going to do. And that turned into an apartment on Hollywood Boulevard. And uh, we were there for a few months. It was horrible. It was everything you hear about. It was yeah. cockroaches and dirty apartments. And someone got murdered on our floor and we said, we're out. And then I moved to the Valley. And then in 1994, there was the massive Northridge earthquake out here that everybody out here remembers. I'm not sure if people in Boston or Massachusetts remember. And I went back to Massachusetts soon after that, actually drove back across the country. And uh, for the fall of 1994, I started at Framingham. Wow. Kept playing music, was at Framingham uh, for four years, graduated from Framingham in 98, but I was would have graduated earlier, but of all that time traveling, trying to play music out here, uh, graduated in 98. Uh, and then I went to Bridgewater for a graduate degree, drove my buddy across the country out here, who is related to this story, uh, and drove him out here somewhere in there, and then came back out here in 99, I think, driving again across the country. <laughs> and slept on his couch uh, that got buddy who I drove out here. One thing leads to another um, through, through a crazy uh, set of events in itself, that buddy got a job at NBC and Access Hollywood, the entertainment news show, like working in like the film library in the show. And he was there for a bit. I was sleeping on his couch and uh, writing my graduate thesis. And then shortly after I got a job, there around the beginning of 2000 uh and then never looked back I've, I've been out here since and that was the beginning of my tv career and you just kept going and going and going to where you are now with with people and what right. they're launching now what you're working on it is uh i guess it's the sign of times how things are changing in tv and entertainment yeah yeah so um that was 2000, uh, if you want me to pick up there. Yeah, that was 2000. I was at NBC and Access Hollywood um, in, in different um, creations because we launched a live show in those 20 years, but I was essentially there for almost 20 years. And I did a lot of different things there. I sort of became like the travel 
uh, producer there. I did a lot of big stuff. And throughout that time, I, uh, I covered seven, um, seven Olympics on what, four or five different continents uh, where we were there for between two weeks and a month for each one of those. And then I started, you know, traveling the world and being doing some pretty cool stuff with different celebrities, this, that, or whatever. And then in 2010, we launched, launched a live show there. We launched a brand new show. And uh, I was a producer and a, and a writer at that show. Uh, and then uh, I, I did a stint at Warner Brothers and Extra. And then, yes, um, People Magazine. Yes, what we're doing at People is uh, taking that brand and that magazine that, you know, is one of the biggest brands in the world and that, you know, you say people, you know what it is, you can picture yeah. what it looks like and turning it into a broadcast television show. Uh, and we've been doing that for two years, uh, but it's a, it's a mix in a side of the change of times in that that show is, yes, we're broadcast in various markets around the country, but we also at the same time every day end up on people.com where as media changes in the way people view things, I mean, the amount of people that look, go to people.com and watch a show there is, is pretty enormous, to be honest, like, you know, compared to broadcast television. Yeah. As, as it changed. People magazine is easily the number one waiting room magazine of all time. There's no doubt, right? You go in the waiting yes. room and you, you look at the date and it's like March 2009. Yeah. <laughs> it's like been sitting there for 14 years of magazine. That's crossword puzzles, but I love, I mean, as a kid, as a teenager, I love that because that was kind of the magazine about celebrities before what we have now. I mean, that was, right. that was the right. one that had all the info. You know, here's, here's what I love and why I, uh, one of the reasons I went to people, one of them is it's a great bunch of people that I get to work with. That I've worked with for a long time. Um, my boss, which would be my executive producer, you know, when he, when they launched the show and he, he decided to, to do this show, brought in who he felt were, you know, some of the best producers in the business, who I feel are some of the best producers of what we do in the business. And they're people that I really like to work with and create with. Um, but, so there's that reason. I'm sorry, I'm going down a crazy road. But the, the thing that I like about people is that it's, it's, it's a great brand that everybody likes. And it's, it's almost like an easy sell, you know, it's like you work really hard in news, especially entertainment news. Um, and what I did at Access Hollywood um, over the years and, and then at Extra and those shows, like those other shows, like um, you work really hard to get stories, right? Because you're looking for news angles and so on. So people's an easy sell. Um, you say you're going to do it for people, but it's like, there's no harm, no foul. It's it's, we just want to do a night's interview. We want to talk about you. The people at home want to read it and hear about you. Um, and I always, I thought that was like amazing. I was like, you're going to get to launch a show and we're going to get, launching a show is incredibly hard. That in itself, let's talk about launching a TV show for a national TV show, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's hard. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of money. It's the right people. People understand where it goes, how it works. It's a massive project. But if you say you're going to get the launch a show from scratch, but you get the people brand behind you. You're like, it, it, it's such an awesome thing. Um, so that's what that's what's interesting about people. It's just a, something that everybody likes. It's an easy sell. And then the second part of it, personally, and, and I think that what the magazine does well, what we've done with the show, is that um, getting outside of Hollywood, which is what I've done for 20 years and, and I enjoy, but it allows us to branch out as a show and to do, do so many things, human interest story, true crime stories. Mm. We, can, we can develop and look for stories outside of Hollywood. And if we like it, you know, we're at a point or on their point, we can do that story. Yeah, you know, That's a cool story. Let's do it and let's make it a big deal. Let's put it on TV. Um, you know, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. And just for, we, we hope we have so many young people that are watching this right now. Your, your role, expand a little bit on behind the scenes. I mean, there's a lot that goes into this. We look at the talent in front of the camera. That's right. not easy, but for the people behind the scenes, I mean, that is a lot of work for a major motion picture, for what you're doing, for anything in the entertainment field. It is. I'll preface saying what I do day in and day out with my brother is uh, a fire chief in Winchester, Massachusetts and a, and a paramedic. And he saves lives every day. And he, he goes in and does very important things. Uh, I, I make TV about what celebrities are doing every single day or hmm. looking for human interest stories. So 
with that said, uh, yeah, I mean, every single day, there's a deadline of a 30 minute, sometimes a 60 minute television show that has to happen. And when you walk in in the morning, it's not there. So the people that work here are, are, are creating television, you know, with a deadline that day. Um, in this position, um, the LA Bureau Chief and one of the senior producers on the show. Um, and I have my hands in a lot of things for that reason from uh, hiring to running the office to writing the show often um, to going out and doing the shoots. I was at the SAG Awards last weekend, um, the Screen Actors Guild Awards, covering yep. that. Um, to in this particular show, I also am one along with another uh, great producer, Mark, uh, uh, budget the show. Um, so person and, and with that i have beats in the show too i have the sports beat the olympic beat the super bowl beat so i'm saying i'm producing so for what i do as one of the senior producers I, I i have my hands in many different parts of the show and that's what i like to do and that's what the position entails now with that said there's a lot of people that just do one of those parts and do it very well and it's it's very important and that may be what they like to do so you have producers that book segments and have relationships and work on the films and, and work on premieres and work on relationships with celebrities. And then you have, and that's their job. Then you'll have producers who run the human interest stories and look for those true crime stories and those human stories. And that's what they're developing those things, right? Yeah. Um, and then you have people that just write, and then you have people that edit, and then you have producers that work in the field and go do those shoots. Um, <clears throat> all that comes together into a show every day that on the East Coast, you can find at people.com at 7 p.m. Um, I, over the years, have done all of those positions. And, and because we're a big name with a really small team of people, um, which is sort of a way of the future in all um, <laughs> uh, workplaces this day and age, right? We're all have many hats. Um, I sort of do, I mean, I have my hand in all those things. Yeah. I oversee and I have my hand in all those things. Yeah. That's great. So. You know, speaking of that, the students that uh, are watching this, they're growing up learning so much just by having a phone, by having social media, they're becoming their own. They probably don't know this. They're their, their own producer, their, their own director. I mean, I remember when I used to have a reel to reel machine. Now I can cut audio on a free software, everything they're learning is going to really help them when they get into this field or even if Steve, if they just want to work from home and do their own thing. There's no doubt about that. We could do, we could do part, we, we have a weekly talk, Michael, about the future of uh, how we make content and the future of uh, the development of stories. And it, yeah, I don't want to sound, sound like I'm going to sound now because I want to sound like this old person that's been doing this forever. But even within the, the 20 year, 23 years that I've been doing this, we've, the, the evolution of, uh, of how we film things or roll on things or tape, we, I mean, even 23 years ago, we would say, we're gonna go tape an interview. Yeah. And that word is extinct in what we do now. Um, but that wasn't 50 years ago. Yes. That was, was 14 years ago, yeah. right? You know, and then like when I started with the, the tapes are this big and they were like, oh my God, look, the tapes are this big. And then it's like, wait, we're going to record on a chip when I was in Beijing. I was in Beijing for six weeks and, and we changed, you know, through our partnership with NBC, we changed the cameras that we're working with. And we're like, okay, well, how's that going to work? Like now it's, so my point is like, this evolution has just happened on on, on my beat in, in national media. And for the kids that are watching this and the, and the kids in college now, that's all gone and and it's all right here and the things that they're recording on these phones and can edit on these phones are higher quality than the tv show believe it or not the national tv show that we put on the air in 2000 and 2001 and at that time a show like access hollywood that the numbers that would watch that show i mean in 2004 uh in athens we uh, we were in Athens for for August for the 2004 Olympics, and Access Hollywood was because NBC is the rights holder for the Olympics. It still is. Access Hollywood at that time led into the Olympics. 
the amount of people that were watching Access Hollywood at that time, it was, it, 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 there's almost, there's not a lot of television on except for big events that can, that have that many viewers in this day and age. And that's like a show like Access Hollywood, like a 30 minute show that's on while well, usually moms are vacuuming the floor and, yeah. and, you know, putting water on and it's on in the background. No one's paying attention to it, right? It's wallpaper. So those numbers are gone. But the way we were making that show, you could do, do on your phone right now and i'll go further for kids at home i relaunched extra with billy bush three years ago it was like kind of a relaunch and i was there for a year and if you went back and watched those shows you know, we, the way we did it was behind the scenes so i was in those shows a lot myself and um i filmed a ton of that show on this very phone right here my phone i filmed it on this phone i didn't put any more mics on billy it was him and i we did a lot of stuff in the office of him and i how we put the show together we put it on the air you know, it, it was fleeting. But my point is, is that it was this phone and you were watching it at 7.30 on TV and I wasn't doing anything more than that. It was just understanding, maybe maybe having some experience with understanding content and frame a shot and how to tell a story. But yeah, if you've got all your kids and people watching this now or if kids are the right word, like <laughs> what you're doing right here is is more, we would have six people do it. Yeah. And, and you're helping to hone your craft. I mean, you could right. set up a tripod at home. You can do auditions. And even if you're just practicing, it's much yeah. easier to, to get reps, so to speak. I, I, I constantly tell myself that my 11-year-old and my 9-year-old daughter who are in the other room doing homework, they pick up their eye touch or whichever one it is without anything. Like they sit here and walk around because they see me do it. And they can, they can show me a three-minute movie. Yeah. An hour later, they're like shooting stuff, and then they're like on their thing, and then they'll be like, and then the phone will fix the audio on it. Most of the apples color correct. Most of the apples stabilize the shot. So again, if you can tell a story, you're showing something. Excuse me, you're showing something that's that's probably better than what was on TV not so many years ago. Yeah, I feel like after all these years, when you're pursuing a career in, in any facet, any business, whether it's entertainment or you want to be a lawyer or everything. The one thing, the one constant is hard work, really mm -hmm. and persistence. I mean, I think we get caught up with, oh, I didn't have a 4.0 GPA. I didn't do this and that. If you work hard, you're a good person. But just that work hard really, doesn't that just translate into everything? I think it does. Coming from, from Leominster, Massachusetts, you know, I was born in Waltham. I grew up in Leominster. Actually, I was born in Lynn. I would, you know, Waltham, and then I moved to Waltham area, then I was in Leominster, where I had my impressionable years, and um, and then I drove out here six or seven times to make it happen, and found my way, and still found a way to get a couple of degrees and stuff in there, and did a lot, right? But, you know, that hard work thing, I say this to a lot of people that come in the office that I hire, like young kids that I actually hire, um, or I don't want to say kids, but just people that I hire of all ages. I say this to um, the girls' soccer team that I coach. I say this to people in the dojo where uh, where I take and teach martial arts. Um, and I say, look, once you get into big business, sadly, hard work isn't everything. You're going to get into big business, especially if you're, you know, in in maybe entertainment and media and Hollywood, and especially if you're gonna be a lawyer, probably especially if you're gonna be a doctor, where there's a lot of other things that come in play. Sure. Right? That, who you know, a thousand percent. Uh, who you're related to, sadly, all these things, maybe not sadly, but the truth is they're all there. Um, and maybe the name of the school that you went to too has a play in it, right? Sure, yeah. But this is what I say to all of them. But there's one thing in my experience that I will guarantee is that the person that's the hardest working and has the best attitude will always be working. That's yeah. what I say. That I can promise. I can't promise that you're always going to get the best job. I don't want to like, like paint this picture that like, no, but I did this and I should have the best job. I'm the smartest. I'm the, it, 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 the real world doesn't work like that. But in my experience and where I come from, if you work the hardest, if you have the best attitude, somebody always wants you and you're yeah. always working. That's my promise. That's what I say. That's a good, I like that. That's, that'd be a good quote board. You should get that printed for your, <laughs> for your maybe. office. Oh, maybe, maybe so. But yeah, that, that, that's where it comes from. And, and that's, that's what I've made my name on. It's, it, 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 it's, 
you know, I had my graduate degree when I started in TV and it was, I took, it doesn't seem like a lot, whatever, but I definitely took that two steps back. Like I could have said, well, I have a graduate degree and I'm going to go into teaching and I'm going to do this because I'm smart and I have this graduate degree. But I was like, no, I want to get in TV. I'm going to work in the library for half the amount of money and sleep on a couch and move across the country and have nothing. Hmm. Um, like many people do, and it doesn't always work out, but I said that. And then when I had my chance, I didn't sleep until I knew that I stamped something in the ground. You know what I mean? I yeah. worked every single weekend. I worked every single, I just didn't say no. Uh, so maybe when, cause you pulling this back to if students are watching this, like I definitely wrestle with, um, it's probably me getting older, but I definitely wrestle. I see kids come out of school and we live in a different time where I don't see that mentality as much maybe. yeah. I don't see the mentality of I'm gonna work until what I just said, actually, I'm going to work the hardest and have the best attitude. And I know I'm going to do well. I, I don't see that as much. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. And I, and I sometimes, you know, where technology cannot be good because you could be young now and you see, geez, that guy's a YouTuber. He's got 600,000 followers. He's making 2 million a year. I can do that. All I have to do is hook up a camera and talk and make content. Right. right. Not that easy. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's easy, you know, there's easier ways to be seen and there's easier ways uh, maybe to be heard. I don't know if that's always good or bad. And um, it seems like there's easier ways for people to feel like they can make money, like a lot of money. So it feels like it's more in your face, maybe. So people yeah. say like, well, that's what I'm going to do. I just think that the, the, the generation, you know, the times are constantly changing and, and um, the workplace is constantly changing. And that's good. I, I don't, I don't yeah. want to be like, oh, my time, it was better. It's not like that. It's not true at all. I mean, it constantly gets better. Um, but I do find myself saying, like, show yourself, work hard, have a great attitude. I promise you, you'll have work. Like, I, I, finally, I find myself having to say that a lot. You know, and I wonder too, it's, when you're in school now, it's easier to access things than when we were younger. We actually had to look things up in a dictionary. Mm -hmm. I mean, I grew up without internet. So there was that, that work incentive right there. We had to really go look at things right. where I tell people I'd be a lot smarter in this generation if I could use Google. Right. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's a, it, that the, the, the immediate access, right. Yeah. Is, uh, but I think it's an amazing thing. I mean, I, me too. I do a TV show every day. I need immediate access to things. So it's, I don't think it's a, it's a bad thing. Um, but I don't think that everyone, as everyone's going into the, the job force and the work world, I think having an awareness of where it all comes from, because you're always gonna be working with a wide range of people with different backgrounds, um, is only gonna make you better. Yeah. I, I think that's what I would say. Like understand, not just being like, well, no, this is what we do. If you, if you understand the background and, and those things, you're constantly better. Yeah. And, and the one thing I'll say about technology uh, is that it makes us faster to do things for sure. In my world, I'm just keeping this to my world. But at the end of the day, if we're just talking about entertainment or TV and media, I keep going back to back to back. Like, can you tell a good story? I'm making this specific to me. And I think that's where the success is in, in the lack of success because the technology all works, but are you interested in telling a story? Now, if, if that story is, you know, Kim Kardashian, you know, was seen making out with somebody of the day, it, it's a silly story and I don't care much about it, but it's still a story. So you still got to tell it, hmm. right? And the person that tells that the most creative and thoughtful and intelligent way is probably going to, be more successful ultimately for that. And that's something that, that comes from Framingham State. Like th that's the sort of stuff that I learned at, at Framingham was that applies to what I do now, right? Cause I was an English major there, really interested in film. Took every class that Dr. Maletti, I don't know if anybody there remember Dr. Maletti at this point, but I took every class he took and I was really into film. But it was ultimately, it was ultimately you know, film history classes and he taught English classes too. So, we're always talking about story, 
and I think my interest in English and storytelling might be the thing that makes has helped with my success in this medium for the last couple of decades. Yeah, it's it's been great to talk to so many people, alumnus on this program here that have said how Framingham State really helped them, gave them vision. I know it helped me too, especially with work ethic. Classes really challenged me, and it's yeah. it's nice to hear that that common theme from all from all of us. Yeah, I I I, I, I agree. I I loved every second at Framingham. Um, it was a different time in my life for, for sure than where I am now. Um, and I was uh, I was a commuter for half the time, more than half the time. And I lived on campus for I lived on campus like a uh, a year and a half, probably. And I was a commuter the rest of the time. Um, so I saw both sides. Like I I, I was had kind of like both lives. And I also I also went a little later. Like I didn't go right after high school because as we started, I traveled and, and did music out here first. So I had a little different perspective of it because I was still playing music actually while I was. I started. I started framing him. I mean, maybe this is good for people to know, or maybe bad, Michael. Like I started framing him. Like I'm going to go there, and I'm just going to keep going there because I want to play music. But I know I should do something. And then it just sort of kept going. Then all of a sudden, yeah. I did really well. And also, I was like, oh wow, I'm getting all A's. And I was like, all right, I'll go another year. And I was like, oh wow. And also, I was like, oh wait, I really like this. I like these people. I like this school. And then I then I stayed on campus for a year. And like, and it sort of changed me. And then I did well. And and for that matter. I did well and I was happy I did because a sister school, so to speak, like Bridgewater, I, I, I really wasn't going to go to more school. I was still playing music and wanted to get into film or TV and come back to LA again. Yeah. But um, I had a girlfriend there at the time and I was like, well, what am I going to do? So I just sort of chucked a graduate application there and I was like, ah, whatever. You know what I mean? I'm so happy I went to Framingham. Life is good. And because I did well at Framingham, it paid off in the sense that Bridgewater was like, no, we want you to come here and we're going to pay your way. And we're going to give you money to have a job and we're going to do all those things. So it kind of kept me in the education system. Um, and uh, I love Bridgewater too. I don't, I, I don't want to like say like, oh, this for Bridgewater, but Framingham set me up for that. Does yeah. that make sense? Like yeah, that's part of my journey. Like if, if Framingham didn't create that Remember, I, I, I didn't go to it. Like, I love this. I'm so, it was, it was different. I already moved out here. I, I was moving back and I was like, what am I going to do? Framingham was like a good distance from home, which is probably a, how a lot of people end up at the schools. It's, yeah. I paid for school myself. I had not for my parents, nothing like that. Like, I was like, how am I going to afford this? And, um, and then it was like, okay, now I'm back here. I'm going to play music in Boston. I was playing all, you can name all the places at the time that were popular in Boston, Middle East, all these places. My bands were playing there. Well, I'll go to school during the day that I ever, you know, my, my parents will be happy, whatever. And, and then Framingham just created a passion for me um, that by that, especially Dr. Naledi, like if I could name like one teacher at the time, like I got so into film and just listened in him and the idea of like, wait, people, these, these other students and these people that I'm meeting can love this stuff as much as me. I thought I was the only one, yeah. you know, like, and um, it created that love and, and then that I did well and I liked it. And I, I, if, I, if that, if Framingham didn't do that for me, I might've just been done. I might've been like, well, I got the degree. I just came here because I was playing music anyway. I don't know what I'm going to do, but it was like that, um, what Framingham did was for me to go like, you know what, I could do a few more years and, and go back. And then suddenly I, I got lucky enough that I, I got sort of a paid way at, at another school. And then one thing led to another. And then I was like, well, now I got that degree. Jesus, how'd that happen? That was cool. <laughs> and that led me to here, you know? So, but it all starts there. Yeah. Like at this point in my life where I was going to be like the guy that goes out to LA and plays music, um, you know, on Sunset Strip and be famous playing music. To that wasn't happening into a big earthquake out here to going back home. They're like, well, what am I going to do? Well, I got to pay. How am I going to figure it out? Oh, you know, oh, wow. Framingham accepted me. Can I afford this? I think so. Let me try. Well, I'll just do it while I do this to, wow, I did okay. Oh, you know, I, I like, I love this camp. I love coming here every day Yeah. to like, you know, the middle of my or second or third year, like, I think I'm going all in. I think I want to live on campus with my buddy. I want to have Dr. Letty's grade. I want to study film. I want to be part of the life here. I worked at the, the school, um, 
paper for briefly, like I just got involved. Um, and, and the campus did all that for me. Like it wasn't for me how it started. I was searching a little bit, you know? That's great. That's great because everyone needs something and that's why they say education is important. Right. And I think what you said there was terrific. Steve, this was terrific. I really appreciate you doing this. I'm sorry if I talk too much for everybody. I, don't, I hope it's <laughs> no. Bad. 